Uh, professor, can you just uh, touch on the point on the last graph you had over there? You had those two uh, infinite uh, series of points of the logarithmic and the exponential. Left is a z-plane, mm -hmm. and you know we are looking at the function of point in a z-plane. So function is in the right graph. W is logarithm of z, and uh, Logarithm of z has an obvious part, which is that the magnitude behaves like it should. It's just the logarithm of the magnitude. But what's new about complex numbers, it has a phase, this i theta. And the phase is imaginary. So the real axis has to do with the magnitude of the number z. Vertical axis has to do with the phase. And the uh, real axis is very simple. If the magnitude is smaller than one, logarithm of number smaller than one is negative, sorry. And if it's larger than one, then logarithm is positive because logarithm of one is zero. So, so that's what happens on real axis. Now, the big surprise is that when I go to imaginary axis, you know, I have to satisfy the relation that the exponent of this function v, which is the logarithm, right, tuk -tuk, is exponential equal to the exponential of theta. And that has infinitely many solutions because not only v equals theta is solution, but if I add to v, any multiple of 2 pi integer multiple, uh, that uh, produces 1 in the exponent. So I'm allowed to produce infinitely many solutions, v, all of them that satisfy this relation. And when you plot them, you just plot imaginary part as always on a vertical axis, and that's what these dots are. They're separated by intervals 2 pi, but there are infinitely many of them. Are you happy? Yeah, very much. Thank you. Your happiness is my bliss. Uh, you know, Georgia Tech is here to provide customer satisfaction uh, to those customers that don't get COVID-19. That we are not responsible for. <coughs>